Hey everybody, this is the Commander Kid. Today, we're gonna do a back-to-back -back review of both of the Kamigawa Precon Commander decks, Buckle Up and Upgrades Unleashed. All right, so we're gonna do, I'm gonna do both of them at the, at the same time. So we can see as they go, sort of how they compare. Both of these are very much, they're actually very similar. We have Azorius vehicles and we have gruel sort of what they call now modified creatures which is very interesting uh, both of them are two color pairings and so i think um, with the intent of them being able to play against each other quite nicely we're going to find that they're going to be very similar in some of their strategies even so let's talk through both of these but let's unbox them both and then compare apples to apples Right. Pretty cool little detail there. Let's see. Honestly, I don't know which of these I'm mo mo more excited about. All right, so inside the box, there's nothing else, pretty much. All right, let's so um the gruel deck. Upgrades Unleashed. I think, honestly, um, the rule deck, just first impressions, is probably going to be the deck that has the better support, just because, you know, modif modified as, an, as a key, as, a, as, a, as, a, as an ability. Um, I'm quite excited for the rule deck. I think that, you know, these modified creatures it means equipment, auras, uh, and counters are modifications. And so if you had to look at the history of magic, you're going to find that there is already quite a good number of counter synergies. There's a lot of really good aura synergies and equipment. So there's been a lot of that that's been printed. So I think if you want to find upgrades for the, you know, the upgrades and leash deck, um, you're going to find a lot, and so that's nice. So your your breadth of how you can upgrade this deck is going to be much bigger. On the other hand, the Azorius deck is very much going to be centered around artifacts, but specifically vehicles. And so even though vehicles have had a little bit of a print run over the last few years, it's not something that is as extensive as the modifications would be. So. It's quite nice that, you know, what magic has given us is, you know, we've already got lots of 1-1 one -one synergies. We've already got lots of aura synergies. We've already got a lot of equipment synergies. So if you want something that you're going to find already a, a lot of, yes, it's going to be easy to upgrade this, but it may start feeling a little bit like, you know, the type of the sort of run of the mill, every kind of deck. And so if you want something more interesting that you probably won't see very often and it's partly due to the fact that there isn't a lot of these sort of vehicles this may be something that you see less of but and that's quite cool so maybe if you want something more unique this is a good deck then to maybe build around all right let's start with the azorius one so you're going to get your life counter. You're going to get like a little pamphlet. And we're going to get our tokens and the really thick commander card. I'm going to leave that in there. All right, Katori Pilot Prodigy. It's a 2-4 for 3. So quite nice. Nicely costed for its power and ability. Vehicles you control have crew 2. At the beginning of combat on your turn, target artifact creature you control gains lifelink, vigilance until the end of turn. You also have an alternative, which is Shorikai Genesis Engine, which is a four mana 8 8 legendary artifact vehicle. It has for one mana tap this vehicle to draw two cards and then discard a card create a 1-1 colorless pilot creature token with this creature's cr 
cruise vehicle um, as though its power were too, too greater. Crew 8 and uh, Shorikai Genesis engine can be your commander. Very nice. Likewise, with the uh, rule deck, you're going to get a life counter, your pamphlet explaining a bit about the deck. Here is your oversized, over thick commander now, and your tokens. I'll just put those up here as well. In the upgrades unleashed deck, we get the Chishiro, the Shattered Blade. Whenever an aura or equipment enters the battlefield under your control, create a 2-2 red spirit creature token with Menace. And at the beginning of your end step, put a 1-1 counter on each modified creature you can control. It's a 4 mana for 4 form. Very nice. The alternative commander in this deck is uh, Kaima, the Fractured Calm. It's a legendary creature spirit. It's a 4 mana 3-3 three, three, with, at the beginning of your end step, Go to each creature your opponent's control that's enchanted by an aura you control. Put a 1 1 counter on Kaima, the Fractured Calm, for each creature goaded this way. All right, so what we have now is Buckle Up, Upgrades Unleashed. Let's do some quick dives. So, what we have here is the mana bases. Both of them have 37 lands each. One thing that I thought was quite interesting with the Upgrades Unleashed deck is as I was going through, I noticed that there was a double class fire value. So this may be just a misprint within this specific set, but what you get in terms of lands, you get a few like sort of dual lands. That one's not Rage of Bean. It's quite a nice dual land. Temple of Abandon. We have a, a Gruel Turf. All right, so we have a few cards here that can probably generate all the sort of double mana that you would be looking for but they're giving you a bit of room to be able to add a few other lands in here as well which is quite nice the nice thing with having a two color deck i find is that your land bases you can round them out really well and you generally will get the colors that you need if Added Orin Reef, the Vastwood, the Palace, and then there's just a bunch of mountains and forests with some really nice art. All right. In the Azorius deck, it's going to be very similar. I have a few dual colored lands here in terms of support, but as you can see, far fewer dual lands than the Upgrades Unleashed deck. Then we have Spy of Industry, which cares about artifacts. And then we have a good number of basics. All right, next up, let's look at some of the uncommons. So we can go quickly through these. In the Upgrades Unleashed deck, they were far fewer than in the Azorius deck. And let's look through them super quickly. Invigorating Hot Spring is a new card. It is really, really nice. It goes really well with another card that they've also added here, Rhythm of the Wild. And so getting to your modified creatures is really well, really, really nice. We have, let's see what else is very, very, very good. We have Acidic Slime, Beast Within. Dumb is Reach. That's quite a nice ramp with rampant growth. Royal Guardian. Steve, a new art for Steve, which is quite nice. A few Umbras. Mage Slayer is an artifact that they haven't printed in a while, which is really nice. Arcane Signet, Hayashita, Soul Ring, Swift of Peace. The Azorius deck, in terms of uncommons and commons. There's going to be a few more here, but a lot of them sort of moving towards the vehicle side. So we have Imperial Recovery Unit, Mobilizer Mech, Prodigy Prototype. We have a few creatures that are going to be really nice for crewing vehicles and giving them passive abilities like 
Aeronaut Admiral. We have Crash Contraband as a as reprint, Generous Gift. Swords to Plowshares with really nice art. Ethereum Sculptor, Reality Shift, Riddle Smith. Raph, which is also really nice. Quite on theme in terms of having him being on ships. Arcane Signet, Pelvar Stone, Foundry, Foundry Inspector, making things cost less as a passive. Shimmer Mirror as an uncommon. Silver Mirror Soaring. Right. Next up, let's look through some of the reprints. We have Agitator Ant, Chain Reaction, Chaos Warp, Goblin Raise Runners, Krenko. Ox of Agonis, Shifting Shadow, Torian Mauler, Bear Umbras, a really nice reprint as well. Champion of Lamb, Halt, Forgotten Ancient, Genesis Hydra, Primeval Protector, Rishkar Prominent, Primo Renegade, Rishkar's Expertise is also really nice. Shamanic Revelation, Decimate, Blade, Reforge, sorry, Bone Horde, and Sword of Vengeance. You can already see quite a few cards that, you know, would definitely stick around for the deck. They're going to add quite a lot to it. And then there's a few here that we can definitely swap out for a few better cards. I don't want to spend too much time on the, on the reprints because we've all seen these cards before. Cataclysmic Gear Hulk, Indomitable Archangel, also a really cool card, haven't seen in a little while. Parhelion the, the second, which is quite a nice vehicle. They put some really nice vehicles in this deck actually. SRAM, Tesha, Emery, all really good. Jace, Architect of Thought, Master of Ethereum, Psy Master Thopterist, Hannah Ship Navigator, really like this art. So you have Raph and Hannah, which is quite cool. Mirage Mirror is also a super great card. A few really premium um, vehicles with a Sky Sovereign, Peace Walker, and Smuggler's Copter. And then we have Weather Light and Solemn. So, overall, I'm really, I really like the cards that they give you here. I think out of the box, this is like quite a nice package of cards for this deck, really on theme. Now we're going to come up to the unique cards in the set and I think we can dive into a little bit of these and go through them and see which ones are really good and which ones probably lack lackluster. Right, new unique cards. And this is from the Upgrades and Niche deck. We have Cozy Patient Warlord. As long as Cozy Patient Warlord is enchanted, equipped and has a counter on it, Koshi has whenever Koshi Patient Warlord deals combat damage to an opponent, you draw that many cards, and Koshi deals that much damage to each other opponent. He's a 0 5 for 3. In this deck, I think he's actually really good because you're going to be, you know, equipping him, you're going to be giving him counters and the like. The tricky thing with this card is that you need all three, it's not any one of them. So he needs to be enchanted, equipped, and has some sort of counter on him. And so even though he's well costed for that little bit, I think we can definitely, this would make a very interesting commander on, on his own, but I think he's gonna take a little bit of effort to get him online. And so I would say he's sort of in the in the lower group of good new cards here. We have Concord with Akami, enchantment at the beginning of your end step, choose one or more, put a one one counter on target creature with a counter on it. You draw a card if you control an enchanted creature, and you create a 1-1 one, one colorless spirit token if you control an equipped creature. So if you go, what uh, sort of do what this deck wants you to do um, and have all three main sort of themes, this would be a really good card here. Um, the fact that you can choose one or more, meaning that if, even if you focus on two of the sort of themes here, you could get some benefit. I think this is a really nice passive, passive um, effect. I'm gonna put it in the middle. We have Konimaru, Battle Armor, Menace, Equip Creature gets plus two, plus two and has Menace. This is a reconfigure creature. Whenever whenever Komainu, Battle Armor, or Equip Creature deals combat damage to a player, goad each creature that player controls. 
I really like this card. The fact that it is a creature when it enters the battlefield and you can reconfigure it. You can do some really tricky things here. The fact that it goads each creature that player controls and it has some sort of evasion. I think this is a really nice card. I'd like to see that on the battlefield doing some things. Coming of Celebration, whenever a modified creature you control attacks, excel the top card of your library, you may play that card this turn. Whenever you cast a card from, a spell, sorry, from exile, put a 1-1 counter on target creature you control for five, it's a three, three. I think um, this is really nice. You you know, in Gruul, you really struggle to find, um, especially what well, within red, you, you really struggle to find these sort of draw engines. So I think this is a really nice one. It has pseudo draw because you get to play the things and because you get to play that card, you can also do lands. So I'm gonna say this is a really nice card. I keep on uh, battle squad. Whenever one or more modified creatures you control attack, untap all modified creatures you control. After this combo phase, there's an additional combo phase. This ability triggers only once per turn. So it's a creature that gives you that additional combat steps for modified creatures. It does cost six for six, six. So this is a real big bomb and it has a really nice effect. Um, and you don't need this thing to attack. It can be any modified creature to get the effect. I really like this card. I think this will do some work. We have Rampant Rejuvenator. Rampant Rejuvenator enter the battlefield with two 1-1 counters on it, and when it dies, search your library for X basic land cards where X is Rampant Rejuvenator's power, and then put them into the battlefield, then shuffle. Really cool card. Four mana, it's zero, zero with two, so when you pay for four, if it dies, you get the two lands. They enter the battlefield. It doesn't enter the battlefield tapped. So this is really, really nice. I quite like this. With some of the modifications, I can imagine that getting really big and then people really worrying about it dying because you could just, you know, completely out ramp any of your opponents. Uh, Tanuki Transplanter. Whenever Tanuki Transplanter is equipped, creature or equip, equip creature attacks, add an amount of green equal to its power and until end of turn you don't lose this mana as steps and phases end so this is quite nice it's also a reconfigured creature i'm gonna put this right in the middle i think uh, it gives you that like nice ramp and i can imagine if you at four if you have a really nice beefy creature at three and and it was equipped you you could get some nice green mana to do things from here it's very sort of situational, so I'm going to put that there. The fact that it's an equipment dog, I think, is also really nice. We have Skill Guard, where you get to put 1-1 one, one counters on up to X creatures, where X is what you pay. And then Aura's equipment and modify creatures you control gain. Hexproof until the end of turn. I think in this deck, this is really nice at instant speed. You'll be able to give your, um, your creatures some sort of protection from some targeted removal. And you get to buff them up a little bit. Um, so if you have an unmodified creature, you can quickly make it modified, which is quite nice. I'm going to put this as a good card in this deck. One with the Kami, Flash, Enchanted Creature you control. Whenever Enchanted Creature or another modified creature you control dies, uh, create X11 one, one colorless spirit creature tokens where X is that creature's power. I'm going to put this down here. Um, the fact that like uh, it has Flash means that you could probably get, get something out of a creature dying, but at, at Four mana, I don't think you'll probably have some a lot. And then even when those creatures enter the battlefield in this deck, there's not a whole bunch that, you know, you not a lot, of, a lot of cards that care about having many, many, many creatures. All spirits. Ascendant Acolyte. Ascendant Acolyte enters the battlefield with a 1-1 one, one counter for each 1-1 one, one counter among other creatures you control. This could get really big. And at the beginning of your upkeep, double the number of 1-1 one, one counters on this, on this Acolyte. I think with a few other 1-1 one, one, support cards this is going to be a very cool card and i think this is going to find a home in many different decks i'm going to put this over here smoke spirits aid for each of target x creatures where x is what you pay i create a red aura enchantment token named smoke blessing attached to that creature these tokens have enchanted creature and when enchanted creature dies it deals one damage to its controller and you create a treasure token that's really nice. It's at sorcery speed, which is a bit of a bummer because you kind of want it so that just before your stuff dies, this makes it a little sneaky. It's harder to be sneaky with it. I really love the art out of these little smoke sprites. They're so cool. And yeah, I think this, there's gonna be some fun things that we can do with this. I think the treasures is the big takeaway. I'd, I wouldn't really care much about the one damage, but 
I really like the treasures. That's really cool. I'm going to put that in the middle. Unquenchable Fury. Enchant creature. Enchant creature has whenever this creature attacks, it deals X damage to a defending player where X is the number of cards in their hand. And Unquenchable Fury is put into your grave from the battlefield. Return it to your hand. So it's a, you know, an aura that you can reuse quite a few times. I think it's, it's sort of ability is mediocre, but yeah, the fact that it can come back, it's quite, quite nice and a little bit unique. It ensures that if you have this in hand, you're probably going to be able to use your mana up and and have a modified creature at most most of the time. So I'm gonna put it in the middle. And then Collision of Realms. Each player shuffles all creatures they own into their library and each player who shuffles a non-token creature into their library. This way reveals cards from the top of the library until they reveal a creature card then puts that card onto the battlefield and the rest on the bottom of their library in any order. It's at seven, so it's quite, quite high up. It's a bit of like a you know it is a bit of a board wipe but an interesting one because the cards don't go into the graveyard so if you i think there's a lot of graveyard sort of synergies that are around right now and so doing this could be quite devastating to those decks and that you get a creature card out of it you just want to make sure that your decks uh, your deck has the biggest creatures and then this card is really really good all right i'm going to put it here in the lower end because i think in order for this deck to thrive, you need to have creatures and then some sort of modifications on them. And that's a two-step process. Some of these creatures are going to come out with modifications in the form of 1-1 one -one counters and the like. But for the most part, you kind of want to build up to the state where you have your creatures, then you put your modifications, and then you're doing the thing that the deck wants to do. But overall, um, some really, really nice cards here. I think the one that I'm most excited about from this whole set would be this Kami of Celebration. I think this is going to be a really nice card. I would be excited to see this in my opening hand. I think this is quite a nice card for the for, and it will fit in a few other decks as well. Overall I think this is some really nice stuff that you can you can get a splash in the deck. All right let's look at the buckle up new cards. There are a few more here than there were in the upgrades unleashed deck but let's go through these. So we have the surge hack mech surge hacker mech when surge hacker mech enters the battlefield it deals damage equal to twice the number of vehicles you control to target creature planeswalker and opponent controls with crew four it's a four 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 five five i think this is a meh card i think the fact that it has menace is quite nice but the ability because it you know targets a creature or planeswalker and i, I can imagine you having a few vehicles but not a huge number of them i'm going to put that in in this deck probably in the middle it's not the worst but not the best universal surveillance has got improvise there's a few cards with improvise in this deck and i, and I think that's great because there's a lot of artifacts draw x cards where x is what you pay into it i put that at the bottom there's many other ways of drawing cards in this deck and i think that's probably one of the more lackluster ones we have access denied counter target spell create x11 colorless up to artifact creature tokens with flying where x is that spells mana value at five, this is quite a lot to hold up, but, um, especially in blue. So everyone's going to be expecting something. The fact that it creates stoppers, it's okay. it's okay. I think if you had things that cared about having a good number of artifacts in here or a few more of them, this would be really good. I'll put that in the middle. Uh, release into memory. We have four mana. It's an instant exile target opponent's graveyard for each creature exiled this way. Uh, creates a one one colorless spirit token. I think this would be great, especially in the meta that I play with. However, it's very situational because you'd want somebody to be putting a lot of stuff in your graveyard. So very early on, this is not going to do a lot of work. I'm going to put that to the bottom. Research Thief. It's got Flash and Flying. For five. It's a 3-3. Three, three. Uh, whenever an artifact creature you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. And I think that's quite nice. I'll put that in the middle. Nice draw engine for artifacts. We have Katsumatsa, the animator. Flying, you can put three into it and until end of turn target non-creature artifact you control becomes an artifact creature and gains flying. If it's not a vehicle, it has base power and toughness 1-1 one, one until end of turn. And at the beginning of your upkeep, put a 1-1 one, one counter on each of up to three target non-creature artifacts. Very specific to vehicles. I really like the passive ability. So if you have a few vehicles, you're really making them stronger. It's an effect that lasts beyond this card being on the board the three mana ability i think is a bit lackluster i don't know if i'd be uh, i can imagine him being a commander being quite interesting but yeah 
it's very situational as well. I'm going to put him actually at the... We have Cyber Drive Awakener. It's for 5 mana for 4-4 four, four, flying. Other artifact creatures you control have flying. When Cyber Drive Awakener enters the battlefield until end of turn, each non-creature artifact you control becomes an artifact creature with base power and toughness 4-4. Four, four. So how this card would work is if you have a bunch of vehicles on your board, you would play this and then all of them would become creatures that you can then you can use. So it sort of turns on all your vehicles as it arrives. I think this is quite nice, especially if you have some way of like blinking it. Um, I like the really the passive effect of giving all artifact creatures you control flying. Six is a bit high, but I think overall this is a very cool card. And I think if you had a few vehicles in the board, you'd want this card to be drawn. I'm gonna put it in the middle. Organic Extinction for 10 mana. It's quite improvised, destroy all non-artifact creatures. I really like this with Improvise. So if you just have a few artifacts, a few treasures, this would be an amazing, amazing board wipe for this deck. I'm gonna put that as up here. I think in this deck, that's really, really nice. Kappa Cannoneer. I know what everybody's thinking. This is just Blastoise in Magic. <laughs> but Improvise, so it's six, but you can bring this down quite a lot, I think. It has Ward 4, so it's got some simple sort of protection. And uh, whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, put a 1-1 counter on Kappa Cannoneer and it can't be blocked. I think this is a great card. I I really, really like this card in this deck and just in general. Imposter Mech. Um, you may have Imposter Mech enter the battlefield as a copy of a creature an opponent controls, except it's a vehicle uh, artifact with Crew 3 and loses all other card types. Not the abilities, the card types. It's Crew 3 and it's a 3-1. Um, I think there's a lot of really good cards and this sort of moves up with them. So if, you're play if your opponent is playing early, good utility cards, you can get a copy of it. Later on, if they have a really big threat on the board, you can get a copy on, of it as well. So I think um, the fact that it makes it a vehicle is quite nice. It just sort of matches the theme of this deck. So as like a clone effect, I think it's quite cool in this deck. Put that there. Swift Reef Configuration. Wait, is that a bear? It is. Um, flash, um, Enchant, Enchant Creature or Vehicle. Enchanted Permanent is a vehicle artifact with Crew 5 and loses all other card types. I really like this. This um, flavor text is awesome. On the bright side, the bear now has a cap holder. <laughs> I think this is a really good card. I think as removal, because it has flash, it's really, really great. The fact that it can do a uh, creature or a vehicle, that's really good. One thing that I, just to take note of, is it turns it into an artifact and it doesn't remove its abilities. So um, if it had to do that, I think this would be an amazing card. I think it's pretty good removal for its cost. I'm gonna put it over here. Iron Soul Enforcer. Iron Soul Enforcer, Enforcer or Commander you control attacks alone return target artifact from your graveyard to the battlefield. This is super good. Just for the fact that you can play it, attack with your commander if you have a commander that's cheaper. So I'm thinking maybe you have a Timna, you attack with your Timna, and then you get an artifact right back. This is super good. I could I could play this in a few decks. I really like that card. The Drum Bellower is a three mana, two one flying. It has untap all creatures you control during each other player's untap step. So if you have these utility creatures, this is going to be super good. It's a bit like a Seedborn Muse, but in white. It's definitely not as good as Seedborn Muse because it doesn't untap your lands. But if you have good utility creatures or mana dorks, um, this is a pretty good card. I'm going to put this as a, as a really good card over here. And then we have the Aerial Surveyor. It's a flying whenever Aerial Surveyor attacks if defending player controls more lands than you. Search your library for a basic land card, a planes card and put it onto the battlefield tap, then shuffle. Crew 2, which is really nice. So I can imagine if you're playing on curve, you play a creature on turn 2, that can then crew this on turn 3, and you can start getting a couple of lands. I'm going to put this in the, in the middle. It's white and it's trying to sort of make a, a stand when it comes to like getting some ramp, which is sort of notoriously bad for, for white ramping and uh, drawing cards. All right, overall, I think there are more good cards than like bad new cards. I think if there's a few cards here that would work in a few other decks, I would say the one that I really like in here and probably one that I could, it's actually really hard. I think between these two at the top, 
between a drum bellower and iron soul enforcer. I think this would fit into a few decks that I have and I think is really nice because it's got a bit of evasion. Um, so that's relevant to blocking some creatures, but I think just for its effect, it's a great utility card. And then Iron Soul Enforcer, I think, is also really, really good. And I could definitely see it also fitting in a few of my other decks. I really like that card. With that, we get the two decks. I think they've been built relatively in similar power levels. Overall, I actually don't have a winner for this one. I think both of these are equally as good. I really like the uniqueness of the Buckle Up deck. I really like the sort of sort of theme and some of the cards that you get in the upgrades and leash deck. Uh, I would say I'm sort of leaning towards Shiro the Shattered Blade as the commander. Although I think the Kami provides like a unique sort of battle strategy where you want to make your opponent's things really strong. The fact that he doesn't have some sort of protection, if he had like a hex proof or something like that, I think I would do that. But you know, you don't want to make your opponent's thing really strong they remove this and then you lose out on your on your goading so i think overall this would be a really good commander for this deck or just like you know get the deck split it up and put some cards in a few other spaces for the buckle up deck between these two commanders i think it's it's very dependent on how you build the deck right so if you if you go katori then you're going to want to have lots of vehicles um, that are much higher than it in value. And so, so you have your pilots over here and you and you don't really have to worry too much about pilots, right? This one sorts out the pilots where if you go the Shorikai Genesis engine route, it's sort of like the opposite theme now, right? So you can maybe dial back a little bit on the vehicles and then focus more on like pilots and utility and ramp and things like that. You want to get your crew eight real quick so that you can use his ability, get a draw engine going. You also make more pilots. I think this is a very cool card. So between the two, I think for this specific deck, I'd probably go Shurikai's Genesis engine. With a, with a bit of modifications, I could go either way. So I think this is a really cool deck. I really, really like this deck. I think it's, it's unique. It's something that you're not going to get a lot of, not a lot of upgrades all the time. So you, you could probably have like a slower upgrade price with it. But you're gonna you're gonna be the the person that everyone kind of sits and, and wants you to succeed at the table. They want to see like you know the sort of theme going because it is different. So it provides like quite nice spectator value. Overall, I'm super chuffed with both of them. I would rate both of these a eight out of ten in terms of purchases. They could have brought in a few additional reprints with higher value. The Bay Umbra in here is really really nice. There wasn't a huge amount or like anything that really stood out as big money card in in this deck. Um, you know, everything was kind of just sort of in the in the middle. I think one of the better reprints was probably the Mirage Mirror, uh, but everything else kind of just was mediocre. That's the two decks. Tell me what you think in the comments below and tell me what you think about this new format. I think going through the different components of the deck gives you a really nice view of it and then you don't have to spend too much time seeing the stuff that you're probably going to swap out or you know have already played with quite a lot so let me know what you think about the, the format and my thinking around that for those that live in south africa these two decks will be loaded up onto the luck shack website so if you want to pick up singles from either of these decks or just want to pick up a bunch of cards from kamigawa which i would highly suggest you do so yes check out luck shack check out their link in the description below and we will see you next time. Thanks for watching.